the top places and things to do in Laguna Beach, California. Today, we'll visit everything from the coves to the caves, beaches, and parks. We'll start at the heart of downtown Laguna Beach. Then, we'll visit popular areas like Thousand Steps Beach, Victoria Beach, and Treasure Island Beach. We'll visit a few of the local favorite destinations, shops, theaters, and restaurants. Then, we'll head up the hill to see a few areas many tourists miss. We'll explore popular tourist destinations as well as local favorites. With over 6 million visitors per year, Laguna Beach is one of the most visited beach towns in Orange County. It occupies about 7 miles of coastline, right in between Los Angeles and San Diego, taking about 60 minutes to drive from either city. The area was originally home to Paleo Indians, the Tongva people, and then Mexico. After the American Civil War, settlers arrived and transformed the town. The area became a tourist destination and a home to a thriving art community. Before 1926, it was an isolated area, but when the Pacific Coast Highway was built, Laguna Beach incorporated as a city. The town grew into a center for arts, with traditions like the Festival of the Arts, Pageant of the Masters, and the Sawdust Art Festival. Laguna Beach became a popular place among tourists and wealthy individuals who built mansions and estates along the coast and hills. Today, the town is celebrated for its beaches, boutiques, restaurants, and arts. Here are the top 10 places and things to do in Laguna Beach. First on our list is Main Beach Park. Main Beach is one of the most popular and accessible beaches in Laguna Beach. Driving by, you'll find the beach right at the edge of Highway 1. It's known for its long, wide, sandy beach bordered by a playground, basketball courts, and a wood-planked boardwalk. It's also a popular place for volleyball, sunbathing, and it's known for the iconic lifeguard tower, which actually used to be part of the gas station across the street. Main Beach is just across from the downtown village, where you can find anything you need to enjoy a day at the beach, like equipment, restaurants, or groceries. We'll explore the village a little later in the video. It can be difficult finding parking here, so the city provides a free year-round trolley service that travels around the city. There's even a free rideshare service similar to Uber provided by the city. To find more information about these free services, I'll provide a link in the description below. At the northern edge of Main Beach is the entrance to Heisler Park. The stairway leads to the top of the bluff and provides access to several beaches along the way. There's wheelchair accessible ramps and bike paths leading down to the beach. The park is known for its beautiful viewpoints and gardens. It's a great place for photography or just enjoying the view. Here at this overlook by Bird Rock, you can see where there used to be a pier connecting from the beach across and even past the rocks. But the pier was destroyed in 1939 by a storm. Along the path, you'll see some of the most beautiful beach views in California. I always like to stop at this gazebo for the uninterrupted view all the way down the coast. Throughout the city, you'll find beautiful art pieces almost everywhere you go. And with over 30 beaches and coves along the seven mile stretch, if you plan well, you might just have your own private beach. This is Rockpile Beach, an advanced surf only beach. This place definitely requires skill and in the right conditions, you can jump right off a rock into a wave. To the north of Heisler Park is Picnic Beach. There's Divers Cove and Shaw's Cove which is one of the most secluded coves in Laguna Beach, known for great snorkeling, underwater structures, plant and sea life. About three miles south is one of the most beautiful parks and beaches we visited. Treasure Island Beach is said to have some of the clearest water in Laguna Beach, perfect for snorkeling. It's known for the arch and caves that you can walk to. The beach is co-managed by the Montage Resort, a luxury resort that sits on top of the bluffs above the beach. It's a beautiful place with rooms starting at about $1,000 and up per night. But the resort offers public services like restrooms and they help to maintain the beach. This is one of the most beautiful beaches in California. The pathways with benches and gardens are well maintained and the beaches are known for their white sands and clear waters. Treasure Island Park sits right above the beach with an underground parking lot just below. There's parking along the Highway 1 but if you're visiting Treasure Island Park, first try the underground lot, which cost a few dollars an hour. A few hundred yards south is Aliso Beach. 
Aliso Beach is one of the most accessible beaches. They have plenty of parking on the street or in the paid parking lot. If you'd like to save a few dollars, you can park on the coast highway and walk down this path to the beach. The family-friendly beach has fire pits and playgrounds and a beachside restaurant called the Lost Pier Cafe. They serve everything from breakfast burritos to burgers, salads, and seafood. The beach is known for the steep incline leading into the water, creating perfect shore break. And for this, Aliso Beach is home to the Vic, which is the annual World Championship of Skimboarding. The competition attracts the best skimboarders in the world, and it's a highly anticipated event. A short walk south from Aliso Beach is Camel Point Beach and West Street Beach. Two and a half miles north is one of the most photographed locations in Laguna Beach. And it's also one of the hardest to find parking. Here's a driver who's been waiting too long for a spot. At the foot of Dumont Drive is one of the most magical locations here at Laguna Beach. People travel from all around to see this landmark and take pictures. At first, the spot looks like any other place in Laguna Beach. But if you take a short walk north around the bluff, you'll find a famous landmark that people travel from far and wide to visit. It's the Pirate Tower at Victoria Beach. The 60-foot tower was built in 1926 by a California senator as a private staircase to access the beach from his home on top of the cliff. It's called the Pirate Tower not only because of its appearance, but because one of the owners of the home used to dress up as a pirate and hide coins and candy between the rocks. The tower can only be accessed during low tides, so make sure to check the tide charts before you visit. And when you do, anticipate a lot of people being here because it's a very popular spot for photography. But in my experience, the people here are friendly, everyone has their turn taking pictures, then moves on. The central hub for arts, commerce, and activity is Laguna Beach's downtown village. The downtown village is home to nearly 100 boutiques, including surf shops, galleries, restaurants, and specialty stores. The main promenade is closed to traffic and reserved for pedestrians. And this makes it a great place to stop with your family, have a quick snack or a bite to eat, and do some shopping. You'll find everything from unique candy shops to souvenir stores selling artistic pieces. Walking through the village, you'll get a good idea for the culture of Laguna Beach. It's a mixture of the appreciation for the arts, a strong beach culture, and a luxurious lifestyle. As you might notice, the village has a very cohesive theme. The residents and city have worked to preserve and enhance the unique character of the village. Yet there's still room for modern innovation and creativity. Here at the Laguna Beach Visitor Center, they offer a variety of services for visitors, including information about accommodations, dining, art events, transportation, and activities. Dining options include everything from fine dining to casual outdoor spots, or you could pick up some foods from the market for a picnic lunch by the beach. The southern end of the village is called the Hip District, and it's known for its art galleries and interesting shops. One of the hidden gems here is Pepper Tree Lane, which looks like something out of a Harry Potter movie. The historic building was built around a pepper tree in 1934. It's considered a local landmark and it's known for its unique shops and boutiques. This is also where you'll find one of the most popular places to get gelato in Laguna Beach. Laguna Beach has a rich art culture and history that's deeply rooted in the community. The Laguna Art Museum was established in 1918. Their collection includes over 4,000 works of art including paintings, sculptures, photographs, and mixed media. The Laguna Beach Playhouse opened in 1920, and it's one of the oldest operating non-profit theaters on the West Coast. The theater has a long history of producing world premieres and notable productions. Laguna Beach is known for its art festivals, including the Sawdust Art Festival, with a variety of events throughout the summer, like live music, art classes, and demonstrations. They also have a fantasy art fair in November and December. The Festival of the Arts is a seasonal art festival held annually in the summer in Laguna Beach. On most evenings, the festival offers live music, typically before the showing of the pageant of the masters. 
The pageant of the masters has a long tradition dating back to 1933, where performers dress up and recreate well-known works of art. Running from July till September, it attracts over 140,000 visitors per year. These festivals showcase the work of local and regional artists and serve as one of many examples of Laguna Beach's enduring legacy as an art community. This next stop ended up being a highlight of our trip. The Pacific Marine Mammal Center is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the rescue, rehabilitation, and release of marine mammals, and it's operated by volunteers. As soon as we arrived, we were greeted by Kevin, one of the friendly volunteers, and given an informative and incredible tour. He explained the mission of the center, information about the animals, and everything that they do to help them. We learned that this year's heavy rains led to increased fertilizer runoff and the overgrowth of a certain bacteria that leads to acid poisoning in seals and sea lions. The toxicity leads to strange behaviors and brain damage, and on their own they might not survive, but with the volunteers' help they're able to detoxify and recover. They also help animals who suffer from everything from swallowing plastic to getting caught in nets. It was remarkable learning about the challenges seals and sea lions face in the local environment and how this creates a need for help. The work they do really makes an impact. Their funding is based on donations, so if the cause inspires you, please consider donating or visiting. I'll leave a link to their site in the description. At the southernmost end of Laguna Beach is Thousand Steps Beach. It received its name for the long staircase that leads down to the beach, but it's actually 218 steps. Once you reach the bottom, you'll see a public restroom with showers and drinking water, and some of the most lavish homes in Laguna Beach, some with private staircases leading down to beach bungalows. This is one of the largest sandy beaches in Laguna Beach, and if you walk all the way to the southern end of the beach, you'll find one of the most popular caves in Laguna Beach. When the conditions are right and the tide is low, you can walk through the caves to the other side. On the other end is a shallow pool area, and when you walk around the point, the path leads to a hidden cove with pools. This bridge takes you up and over the seawall, and these are the hidden pools at Thousand Steps Beach. These pools were built in the 1920s and were originally intended for private use. Today, they're open to the public, provided that you can get there. So if you plan to visit, make sure you visit at low tide and that the waves aren't too big to keep you from entering the cave. Visiting here should provide for some amazing photo opportunities. To the south, the beaches are all private, and here's a few shots of the most southern beaches in Laguna Beach before you reach Dana Point. And imagine having these beaches all to yourself. Traveling to the northernmost part of Laguna Beach, you'll find Crescent Bay. Crescent Bay is a large cove about a quarter mile in length, located near Cliff Drive. This is a great beach for families because it has bathrooms and free parking a short walk from the beach. At each end of the bay are rocky areas that under the right conditions are perfect tide pools. You'll find everything from fish to crabs, anemone, and urchins. If you're feeling adventurous during a low tide, you can walk around the southern bluff to a secret cove. About 120 yards offshore is Seal Rock, which is a popular spot for snorkeling and diving. Visiting here reminded me of some of the beaches you'll find in Hawaii with the clear blue water and dramatic coastlines. If you don't have enough time for the beach, you can visit Crescent Bay Point Park, which sits just above the bay. The park is located at Crescent Bay Drive, and there's parking on the street. This is a great place to go for a short walk, enjoy the view, or watch the sunset. There's a grassy area with benches and picnic tables, and panoramic views of the ocean and the southern Orange County shoreline. This is one of the most beautiful overlooks that we saw, and I highly recommend visiting. The Top of the World, also known as Alta Laguna Park, is a community park and the second highest peak in the San Joaquin Hills. From here, you have a clear view of Laguna Beach, Crystal Cove State Park, Aliso Viejo, and on clear days, you can see much of Irvine and Orange County. It's a popular place for hiking and biking, picnicking and playing sports. The facilities include pickleball and tennis courts, basketball courts, and playgrounds. It's a peaceful place to take a walk, enjoy the view, or spend some time with family. Let us know your favorite place to visit in Laguna Beach in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, give it a thumbs up. 
And for more travel and adventure videos in Southern California and beyond, subscribe and hit the notification bell. To learn about more amazing places you can visit, click right here and I'll see you in the next video.